Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome back to our Maysmore Apiaries sponsored series of videos for 2017. Uh, we're back at our apiary where we've carried out the Bailey Comb Exchange and today's video is a review of how that's going and we're going to take a look at how the bees have taken down the sugar syrup and also to see how far they've drawn all of the frames of foundation that we've given them uh, from last week. It's been a really hot week and we're just into the start of the summer nectar flow. Uh, we have here in Norfolk uh, lots of blackberries and lots of lime trees and the nectar is starting to flow from those and I've seen lots of our colonies now starting to bring in an excess of both nectar and pollen so it's time to super some of those uh, beehives. But for Bailey Comb Exchange, it's really good news because it means that the bees have got plenty of nectar plus the sugar syrup that we've been feeding them in order to produce lots of wax and therefore build out those frames. So we're going to light the smoker, suit up, and we'll head over and take a look at the uh, Bailey Comb Exchange colony. Okay, so we're back at the hive and we'll just loosen off the straps. So the Maysmore Apiaries poly hives, these are commercials and these come complete with the straps as well. So we'll just take the roof off to uh, reveal the feeder. And the bees have actually emptied the feeder. Uh, there's no food left, they've taken it all down which is really good. We topped it up with a little bit more syrup about three days ago and um, they've really worked hard at, at taking it all down and, and using it. So we'll take the feeder off. Okay, so uh, here we've got the original frame that we had the queen on and we moved her up and then on either side we've got five frames. We could put an additional frame in or a, a dummy board but at the moment we've just got this gap here at the end and once the bees have pulled all of these frames I'll then make a decision as to whether we go with a 12th frame. Uh, I suspect we'll use a dummy board because I don't want to damage the side of the um, polystyrene um, hive body. So let's see how the, the bees are, are doing in drawing these frames. So this is the outside frame and they have already worked on this and drawn a lot of the foundation out on both sides. So that's, uh, that's fantastic to see. And if you haven't seen the uh, first video of the Bailey Comb Exchange then take, take a look at that and in that I explain uh, what we're doing and why we've swapped it all around but just briefly uh, the reason for doing it is to replace all of the frames in a beehive but not sacrifice the brood that you've got in your original brood box so we're allowing all of the original brood to emerge and then we'll remove all of the frames from the bottom of the stack. We've got two brood bodies here, one on top of the other, and the queen has been trapped in the top of the two brood boxes. And so all of these workers have come up and uh, have drawn this foundation in order to give her room to uh, lay and reproduce more workers. And this frame this is the third frame and this has got eggs and young larvae in so uh, the queen has laid in in this one so that's really good news she's started to get into some of the cells and is laying uh, eggs and this frame has got capped brood on it which is really good to see and they're even producing rudimentary queen cells there's one here so we just break that open and the bees will repair and hopefully replace that rudimentary 
queen cell with just normal worker cells. So we go through the top box to just have a look to check that everything's okay and so far everything's fine. This is a, a really nice frame of sealed brood. And what I'm doing as I take the frames out is just looking, I'm checking the colour of the cappings to make sure that everything looks healthy. And this, um, here in the UK we would call this a digestive biscuit coloured capping which is perfect for healthy brood. So that's really nice to see. And just looking at the way the frames are moving on the commercial brood box, we, you'll recall that we used Vaseline or petroleum jelly on the runners um, to help the frames slide. And at the moment, obviously it's early days, but uh, it's making it very easy for me to remove the frames. Again, we've got some rudimentary queen cups here. And in fact, these have, have got eggs and larvae in, so the bees are actually attempting to produce new queens. So I'm gonna destroy these because we've got eggs in all of the other cells. So we'll knock these down. And it's important for me to remove all of these because I don't want these bees to swarm. They're a good colony and they've been producing lots of honey for me over the last season or two. And this frame on this side is loaded with eggs, which is fantastic. So as I go through and just check these frames, um, I will just mention that all of the information regarding the equipment that we're using will be down in the description below. So if you're interested in using these poly hives or poly nukes, mm -hmm. then uh, have a look in the description and there'll be links there for all of the information and also for the smokers and hive tools uh, which uh, Maysmore Apiaries can supply uh, for you. Uh, here's the queen. So we'll pop her back. And very easy to see the queen. We, we don't need to see the queen but it's um, it's always easier to spot the queen when she's um, marked with a dot on her back. So in terms of frames that we've got, this is uh, frame number nine of the, of the new frames. And that one's been drawn quite well. There's still a little bit of uh, comb to be drawn and then finally the, the end frame and just to mention that although the frames are moving quite easily the side wall of these poly hives is actually quite tough um, so I'm, I'm gaining more confidence in my ability to actually use the side wall to uh, open up frames and to lever against. I did think that it might damage quite easily but at the moment it's, um, it's proving to be um, quite resilient. Okay, so this frame is, um, is not yet drawn, so this is the final frame. So within what's that, a week to 10 days, with the weather being as good as it's been, with us feeding them, and with there being a nectar flow on, uh, these bees have, have drawn nine frames, and these are commercial frames, so nine large frames of foundation uh, almost fully. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move two of these frames across and drop this frame in closer to the new brood nest area, but not 
splitting the brood nest area and then sliding it back and the bees will be more inclined to draw that now than if it was on the outside wall. So that's a, a fantastic position to be in after just a week to ten days uh, where we've um, pretty well got an entire new brood box full of foundation that's been drawn. So I'm just sliding all of the frames across to replace the final frame and those frames have slid on the polystyrene runners quite easily so I'm quite happy that um, these poly hives are working really effectively. So we'll just drop the end frame back in. And of course when I say drop it back in I mean place it back in carefully. Um, so the next step is to take this box off and have a look to see how the brood is developing in the bottom box. Okay, one of the things that I am concerned about is the damage that hive tools might do to, to the brood box, but that's come up really easily. We've got some damage here from uh, what I think is rabbits, so we've got to watch that, but um, the polystyrene box is a lot lighter than some of the wooden boxes that I've used, so I'm just going to pop that down on top of the feeder and now we've got the bottom brood box that has all the old frames in so we're going to take a look inside here. Here we've got the queen excluder and I'm just going to lift this gently. Um, my concern with this excluder, uh, I'm not a fan of the plastic excluders because they sometimes have a tendency to ping and act like a catapult um, but also we are straight down on top of these um, lower brood frames and the bees are using wax and propolis to gum the two together. I always like to have a bee space um, between the queen excluder and these frames so we're going to have to just pay close attention to that and it might be that we modify and try to find some wired framed excluders instead of the plastic ones but um, it's doing its job it's uh, prevented the queen from getting down into the bottom box so what we're looking for now is to see if all of the brood has emerged and then we can remove all of these frames the oldest frames can be melted down and the wax can be recycled. On this side we've got still a small patch of brood that's yet to emerge. But with healthy colonies, if you're just looking to replace the frames in order to maybe produce more frames of drawn comb for your own use, then Provided you have healthy bees and there's no major disease problem, you could then use these combs in nukes or in building up other colonies so that you've actually got um, frames that have already been drawn ready for other colonies to use. Okay, so uh, we've got an, a very interesting situation that has just occurred in that Having opened up this bottom box, we've discovered there's a second queen in the bottom box. I don't know whether you can see her, but she's just near my finger here, just gently wandering around. And I suspect she may well be a virgin queen. So what we're going to do now is to split this colony because we're going to take advantage of the fact that we've now got another queen that we can use. So the top box has now been drawn really well, so they're fine. So we're going to move the old queen to a new position in this uh, apiary. And basically we're going to use this as a split where Previously I've demonstrated making up two nukes but we'll leave this colony here because all we were doing was 
just showing how to replace combs. These combs are perfectly fine. The new queen can continue as she is and we'll probably give her a couple of frames of capped brood that we've got here just to help build up her colony. But all the flying bees will come back to this colony and they'll have a, a new queen. So that's a, a really interesting situation and one that we can take advantage of. Okay, so we've taken a couple of frames of uh, capped brood and put in with the existing queen and we've moved that brood box to another site in the apiary. And what I'm going to do now is to just go through and check for any further queen cells because having swapped this out we don't now want this colony to swarm. So this was the frame that we put in to replace the frame with the queen on that went into the top box. And so I'm looking for additional queen cells now because, and here we have another one. They've obviously made queen cells having been perhaps separated from their queen. And so we could have more queens that could emerge and then they could swarm. So we're going to remove any additional queen cells that we've got simply by pinching them out. Of course, if you wanted additional increases, you could use any further queen cells that you have and place them into nukes. So I'm just going to shake the bees off, just gently, just to expose the frame so that we can see if there are any additional queen cells. shake the bees off just to check for any additional queen cells that there might be and it looks as if this is the queen cell here that our new queen has emerged from because this queen cell is open and you can tell because there's a very neat chewed rim around the end of the queen cell. Again, we'll shake the bees off. just to ensure that we don't have any additional queen cells. Okay, so what we've got now is a slight roar going on with the colony, and that could be because of the old queen's pheromones now being absent from the colony. And it's the 9 ODA pheromone that is the most volatile and disappears the quickest. And so the bees will now have to adjust to the fact that they have probably a virgin queen in the colony that's now going to head up the colony. They have no other ways of making a queen. They've got no eggs. Uh, this box is completely void of any larvae. And so they are literally stuck with the one queen that they've got. So she's going to be safe. And hopefully she's now going to go off and mate and uh, head up this colony um, provided she mates successfully and the next few days is going to be nice and warm and sunny it's going to be dry and so I think we stand a good chance of a successful mating for her so we'll close up the colony important to mention that you shouldn't mark a new queen until 
I would say at least a good two or three weeks after she's returned from her mating flight and you can assess the laying pattern and that the bees have taken her back in and everything's fine and that she's laying well uh, and you've got a, a good laying pattern that started to emerge. We've had one or two casualties with squashed bees which uh, isn't great but that's part of the um, issue of having a queen excluder that fits tight onto all of the top, top bars. Okay, so I'm going to smoke the top of these bars. I would normally scrape this back, but I suspect that what's going to happen is that the bees will just replace it again. So I've just knocked the bees off the queen excluder. We don't need to use a queen excluder on here at the moment, so we'll just put the cover board, which is the plastic um, sheet. Uh, we'll pop that on, and then we don't need the feeder any longer. So we can then simply get the hive put back together. And I think that probably uh, next week we'll be replacing the feeder that was on there with a super. And uh, I would expect with all of the flying bees coming back to this colony that we will certainly get uh, one super of honey off them um, because these bees are this season's foragers and so we've created a new colony and we should get a small crop of honey off them. Again, my concern is that this sits tight onto the frames and we might end up crushing a few bees but we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, this hive had number 11 but the number refers to the queen rather than the colony or the hive so this number will go with the old mm -hmm. queen and then once the new queen has a successful laying pattern we will then give her her own number and she'll head up her colony in her own right. I have just got possibly the luckiest break of this season so far. Uh, that uh, Maysmore Polly hive with the uh, Virgin Queen in the bottom box and the Old Queen in the top box is just one of those things that happens uh, probably my own fault well, definitely my own fault because uh, I didn't check the bottom brood box last week when I came and topped up the feed. But it's been, trying to think back, I think it might be 10 to 14 days. But even so, within two weeks, uh, those bees have pulled all of that foundation pretty much. And uh, we've been able to do a really good split on it. So uh, I'm delighted that we've caught it in time and now we've got an additional colony in another one of the Maysmore poly hives that we can now take through the rest of the summer and into the winter. And I think what we have got is uh, a colony with the new queen with all of the flying bees that will produce some honey this summer because in placing her on the stand uh, of the existing hive, all of those flying bees will come back and migrate to her and so they will just continue foraging. We've got plenty of brood that's now emerging. Those will be the new nurse bees. And there's no reason at all why we can't expect to get a small amount of honey from them. The old queen is on a slightly different site. And now she will uh, continue to develop her colony. Uh, there are sufficient bees there with her. And we've placed a couple of extra frames of emerging brood with her so not only will she have cells that she can immediately lay into but she'll have bees emerging that will act as nurse bees as well. They'll be a little bit light on foraging bees because all of the flying bees are going to go back to the original hive site but they've got plenty of stalls importantly that they will be able to survive without any problem at all and new foraging bees, new flying bees will emerge orientate themselves to the new site and be able to then build up that colony. I wouldn't expect to be able to take any honey stores off that colony this year but what I'm hoping 
and expecting is that we can now develop that colony into a strong colony for the winter and then they'll be ready in the spring for next year's early season crop. I hope you found that interesting and if you haven't yet subscribed please do consider subscribing. Uh, it's uh, mid-season now and we're uh, growing in the number of not only subscribers but also the videos that we've got and I'm very grateful to everybody that has subscribed. It gives me a great deal of confidence in producing more of these videos for you. Don't forget we've got our Facebook group which is Stuart's Beekeeping Basics and that's fast approaching a thousand members uh, and everybody in there has been really helpful in answering lots of questions that the new beekeepers have been posing so thank you for that and we've also got our Twitter and Instagram feeds that you can follow us on as well. Finally don't forget we have our Patreon page which is where you can support me in the production of these videos and all of the help and support that you give me is uh, very much appreciated and uh, as we produce more videos we're becoming better able to edit them and to use better software and to use better equipment so I'm very grateful to everybody that's been helping out with that. Uh, I'll put all of the details down in the description below and uh, don't forget to leave any comments that you might have about what you've seen today and if you've experienced a, a Bailey comb change or anything uh, similar where you've maybe had a couple of queens in a, a colony and you've been able to split them I'd love to hear from you. I think today has proven that uh, despite your best efforts you can sometimes encounter issues in a beehive that uh, you're not ready for but if you have uh, a little bit of thought about what you're doing and what you could do then you can recover a situation that could potentially mean the loss of a swarm into an increase uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching that. So we'll catch up next time but for now thanks for watching.